first time home builder, I don't have any build skills that I will tout. I'm sure most of you agree. But I do have a methodology and attention to detail that I hope has served me well in wiring this and will avoid melting down my airplane and avionics in my shop, which is my house. In the long form version, you'll see me use the Air Force test plan methodology for this first power up test. I establish the test objectives, set limitations, implement safety measures, and create test points. But let's face it, you're here for the juicy stuff. Fight's on. I can't believe this is happening. Okay, test point one, backup battery. Safety measures in place. What's, wi <laughs> What's wired here is G3X Touch, GNX375, and then all the sensors. So, with any luck, these two will power up. That's a good sign, that's a good sign. That's a fantastic sign. Okay, so test point one, we'll call that a success. On quickly into test point two. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna just make sure I don't smell anything. Um, I'll kind of feel the backup battery, make sure it's not hot, no smoke, it's fantastic. Test point two. So without the backup battery on, we're just gonna um, turn this on to give power to the vertical power system so that we can configure it. Laptop powered up, I've got the, um, the vertical power configurator software loaded as well as I've downloaded the file that I created on vertical power's website that configures all the switches and circuit breakers. Yes, good news, that has power. No weird sounds, no smoke. We can configure the vertical power. Okay, good. So device configuration, starter, 10 amps, GDU 460. Now that the vertical power system is configured with circuit breakers and switches, etc., the next time I power up the switch, we should get potentially the GNX375 if the flow through through the backup battery is working, but the G5. Those are the two things I'm really looking for. Come on, yep, GX375, G3X Touch, and yes, we've got power to the G5. This is kind of a big one. So this includes a couple of mini buses. I've got COM1 mini bus, COM2 mini bus, which include the two LRUs back there, GTR20 radio and uh, GMA245R, uh, as well as the autopilot system on a bus. So that's the GMC. 507 and the two autopilot servos as well as the g3x touch on the right side okay i heard clicking i'm seeing radio power up i'm seeing g3x touch i've got power on the gmc 507 i've got green flashy lights on the roll servo Whew. okay we'll continue on with test point five. Oh, that's so great Okay, let's try accessories. Yes, those are so bright. I can't dim them, but I can turn them off. <laughs> Everything appears to be working. Oh my gosh. Okay, with accessories on, the that USB charger should work, so I guess I could test that. Okay, I've got USB to US, uh, USB-C to C. One-handed. <gasps> Charging, yes. All right, let's test the manual reversion. Here we go. Yes! <laughs> oh, let's try to transmit. Transmit, receive. Oh my gosh. Okay, heading track, let's see if I can. Oh, yep, this changes heading. I do want to see the electrical system, now that it knows it's vertical power, now I'm seeing vertical power show up. So let's go to that screen. This is what makes you money on the, the vertical power, what, it, what all that extra money buys you, I guess is a better way to put it. So this is where you're getting away from the circuit breakers and where you get into your electrical system. Here's a good example. On my avionics master bus, let's go ahead and power that up. So on the avionics master bus, I have the autopilot system, which I can 
I can keep everything else on the bus, but if the autopilot is acting funky or, or for my first few flights, I can actually deactivate that system. So look, so the GMC 507 turned off as well as the servos turned off. So, but yet I can have everything else on that, um, that bus. That's, it's not technically a bus because this switch doesn't turn on everything, but the VPX is con, um, configurable such that this acts like, hey, this is one bus, but now you can federate it into uh, other systems. So COM1 is just radio one, so I can turn that on and off, boom. Turn it back on. Now COM2 is my remote GTR200 or 200R, as well as the audio panel. So if I if I am having issues there, I can manually turn that off. Uh, electronic ignition two, I can manually turn that off because I'm only gonna have one hooked up through the VPX, the other is directly uh, hooked up to the battery. Without having nav lights hooked up and without hooking a multimeter up to my, um, to my cable, um, it's just insulated with some electrical tape. So I can safely throw the switch over here and see if this, uh, this check mark uh, does that. So nav lights on and look at that. And now let's check pitot heat. Pitot heat, good. So we verified that that's working. Uh, let's go landing lights. Hopefully both of those turn on. Good, both of them turned on. And you'll probably be able to see, after I've configured the wigwag, especially in test mode at zero knots, which we are right now, we could probably see them alternating. There should be an enunciator right there. Starter engaged. And starter off. And you can see the amperage of each. If there's an amperage being pulled, you can see how much in that individual um, circuit, I don't want to say bus because each individual circuit is pulling. So, so as part of the test points, I want to take note of all those with them powered on, not the lights, of course, because there's no load currently, but see how much amperage everything is pulling and verify, A, I have the correct circuit breaker value set up within the backside of the, the vertical power. And then also B, I want to validate that I have the correct gauge of wire. Right, Let's bounce it off the advisory circular 13 dash whatever it is to, to ensure that you know, with it being a 14 volt system, with the length of wire that I have, that I have the correct gauges. I already have a spreadsheet of everything that this, the documentation from each device gave me, but I wanna bounce it off of reality and check it here. The other thing that I wanna test eventually once I get the horizontal stabilizer and trim servo installed is that if I power off everything, including the autopilot system, Will the trim still work? It's wired to. The trim does go through the autopilot system, but if it's off or has a fault, it should pass power straight through to the servo. You might not get an indication, but you should still be able to power it. Okay, so that's something. That's a test point I'll have to add later. Overall, this was a resounding success, and I do have a few people I'd like to thank. First off, Jess Ver Veruda of New View Technologies and Oshkosh. Thank you for patiently teaching me the fundamentals of wiring this CAN bus based system and being my wise consultant along the way and also my friend. Thanks to Chad at Vertical Power for validating my VPX sport configuration plan and finally Bob with TCW for validating my very non-standard backup battery plan so I can divert power from backup avionics to one of my electronic ignition systems with a single battery. In short, it involves strategically placed diodes to ensure current flows to where it needs to go in case of an engine out emergency and doesn't backflow charge to the main battery. Listen, don't let the complexity of this installation and test intimidate you from wiring your own avionics. I encourage you to be methodical and take your time and perhaps most importantly, validate your plan with somebody who knows more than you do. This was by far the most enjoyable part of the build so far and I'm eager to tidy up the wires, close out the cockpit, and get the wings on in my beautiful new hangar slash studio that'll be done at the end of the year. I am developing a way to share all my planning documents, schematics, design files with you, but I gotta make sure the legal I's are dotted and T's crossed, along with some other fun announcements, but that'll happen at my next YouTube milestone, which is an astounding 10,000 subscribers. So look for that coming in the next few months. 
I'm also traveling to Italy to meet my paint designer, Mirko Pecorari, in person after working with him exclusively in VR space. So I'm super excited for that, bringing Ani with me, of course. It's been a pleasure talking about this. Clearly, I'm very passionate about that. I, I really appreciate you humoring me and sitting through my myth mythology. Hopefully it helps. Hope it wasn't too boring. Until next time, you're clear to wreck.